Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So here's another deck profile update for you guys. So if you, if you already saw my post, I was going to originally post this a few days ago, but I decided to delay it simply because I wanted to give it a proper playtest in person first. And I, as I mentioned, I dueled one of my friend's decks. He played Numeron Eldritch. The matchup was pretty close, but there were times where uh, I kind of got a little overwhelmed, especially against Dragoon and stuff like that. And the Numerons themselves, they were just kind of broken in their own right, especially because I kept getting hit with Zexel a lot. So I was trying to figure out, okay, so this deck tends to have a problem with backup plans. And I figured, you know what? I need to come up with a strategy where it can deal with almost every contingency. Um, so I decided to rebuild my deck, kind of change some things, and test out some different theories. And so far, I think I found the theory that actually works. So I'll get right into that. And yeah, let's go and get started. So the main deck is 41 cards rather than the usual 40, simply because... I mean, one extra card doesn't really kills doesn't really kill this deck's consistency. Plus, I needed to make room for a few other different cards to see, like uh, mainly just to see like how well it plays. And yeah, I really like how it goes. So anyway, starting off with the Salamangre engine, playing one copy of Gazelle. Sadly, it's still at one. Honestly, if this or Circle can come back to two, I would be pretty, pretty happy simply because you know it'd be a huge consistency boost. Gazelle's literally the heart and soul of the deck, and yeah, it just gets all your combos started. Next, two Foxy. Uh, this is just a good way to deal with floodgates and stuff. So you mainly just want to use it for the graveyard effect. Discard a Salamangri card to special, and then you get to pop a face-up spell or trap. So yeah, really comes in handy whenever you really need it to. And yeah, so next up, two copies of Spinny. Spinny is a really good extender. And that's really all he is uh, right now. It's just an extender piece to help you link climb. But overall, a really great card. Um, if Mirage Sally was legal to one again, you know, this could actually be a lot more broken because it's... You can essentially kind of loop it in a way, not like like endlessly. It's only a hard once per turn to use this effect, but still, yeah, I would I would really love to see the Mirage Silo back in some way or another. Next, two Jack Jaguar. So this is going to be one of your main recursion pieces. Uh, Jack Jaguar spins back any one of your Salamangri monsters back to the deck, or even your extra deck if you spin back one of the Link monsters, and especially some of itself. So it's another extender, and it's level four, so you can go into some rank fours with this. So, yeah, Salamangri Jack Jaguar, really good. And next up, we got Falco. Falco, which which had a super rarity, at least. Uh, this basically recurs your spells and traps by setting them back on the field. And it also has a pretty neat effect where you can bounce back one of your Salad Monsters back to your hand. And, of course, it actually has to go back to your hand for this part to resolve, uh, where it needs to special summon itself. So, yeah, in order for it to special summon itself, you have to bounce back one of your Salad Monsters uh, back to your actual hand. So, yeah. But again, Falco, an amazing card. Also a level 4 monster, so, well, there you go. And as for the, for the Salad Monsters, I'm not running Fowl, simply because, you know, it's a good extender, but right now it's like, it's a little um, format reliant because, you know, or format dependent, I should say, because, you know, right now this is a very trap-heavy format, and right now everyone can easily respond to Fowl's effect, so that's kind of the reason why I'm not running it. Anyway, moving on. So, for the side Cybers engine, I'm actually running three copies of Parallel Exceed still. This card is amazing. Simply the fact that, you know, it's also really good for chain blocking, too. So if you want to, so whenever you link into, like, a Bay Lynx and this card's in your hand, you can essentially chain block for your Bay Lynx. And, yeah, you can just special summon this card, and then it's special summon another copy of itself, both in which will become level 4 monsters. So, yeah, more extenders, more power to you. Now, for the new theory, I'm actually running, I'm actually running three copies of Flame Buffalo. Simply because right now we're in a format where there's so much disruption going on, specifically with hand traps. Uh, Lady Debug by itself really loses to a lot of hand traps, almost every single one. It can lose to Valor, Impermanence, even Mourner. I, not many people running that one, but, you know, some people could still catch it by surprise. Um, it loses to Ghost Ogre, because, you know, even if you get the search, Ghost Ogre will essentially uh, be effective against you, simply because, you know, you won't be able to Link Climb anymore, and you might lose your combo that way. It also loses to Cypher and Gear Gamma, because you wasted your normal summon. So Buffalo is just a little bit better simply because it's easy to chain block. You can almost, you're almost guaranteed to chain block this card every freaking time. So yeah, Buffalo is just so good right now. Now I am still running the one debug. I might actually consider cutting it for good simply because again, um, if anything, I'd just rather ha see playing Buffalo in my opening hand more than Lady Debug. I mean, Debug again, is just good. If your opponent for sure has, has brought out through all his disruption pieces, then Deba can be can come in clutch light game, but yeah, Buffalo is really going to be the one you want to play more. So yeah, now for hand traps, uh, I'm running three copies of Ash Blossom. 
I'm now running two copies of Ghost Ogre rather than Drone Lockbirds, simply because Drone Lockbird is only good against certain matchups right now, specifically Drytron. So I decided to side out my Drone Lockbirds. So Ogre right now is actually pretty good. It can actually throw a lot of people off guard, especially because like a lot of people are playing hybrid decks. As I mentioned, Numeron Illich is the one I, I play tested this with. Um, it's just really good to deal with that field spell. So yeah, Ghost Ogre is really good. You know, you definitely, it's just really good for removal, non-targeting and yeah. And of course I'm still running the two Veilers as I've always been before. It's just basically more copies of Impermanence and it's a lot better now. So again, since, you know, Call by the Grave is still at one, but, um, the only bad thing is like, you can only activate it during your opponent's main phase, which isn't too bad, generally speaking. So if you open up with this, it's not going to be the worst thing in the world. So, and it's not once per turn either, which is really great. So, yeah, Feg Veiler, still an amazing hand trap. I am running Impermanences, which we'll get to later on. They're just with my other trap cards. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, for spells, of course, you still got to play three copies of Sign and Mining. This is going to be one of your main searchers. You discard a card to, to search out a Cybers monster, and it really goes really well with your Salad cards, because, like, if you discard one of your Salad monsters and search out Gazelle, Gazelle's effect will essentially trigger for you, and you basically get a plus out of that. Next, two copies of Will. Uh, it's Soul Charge and Monster Reborn, so yeah. And it's pretty annoying once, you know, the more you get to recur all your monsters this way. So yeah, Will, the Salamangrids. I still like to run it at least two, so. Uh, some people like to run it at one. It's really up to you. It, honestly, like, one is probably just fine. I'm just playing two just so I have a chance of seeing it in my opening hand. Uh, of course, one copy of Circle. I, like I mentioned, either this or Gazelle back to two, I would be happy enough with that. And of course, one Sanctuary, just so you can do your reincarnation links more uh, more consistently. Uh, moving on, two copies of Pot of Desires. You know, two is perfectly fine. You don't really need to run three. If you want to run three, go ahead, but I think two is the perfect number. Two Cosmic Cyclone now. So I am main decking my Cosmic Cyclones simply because, as I mentioned, this is a trap-heavy format. A lot of people are playing like back row heavy strategies like Eldlich. Um, Virtual World generally plays um, back row, especially because like if you want, if you try to stop their calamities from resolving, they're going to use their trap card to pop it. Uh, we also got um, Zuzu actually does play quite a good number of trap cards too. So like again, there's a lot of decks right now that are actually playing um, back row. So even the new Drytrons are going to do everything they can to protect their Vanities rulers. So yeah, you want to be able to get rid of all their spells and traps too. But anyway, um, for the one of, you know, one Monster Reborn. So because Will of the Salamangri does have a once per turn clause, Monster Reborn does put in a lot of work, if you, especially if you see it in your opening hand or so. So yeah, definitely an amazing card. So I definitely love it. All right, so that's it for the spells. Now moving on to traps. Uh, for traps, I'm running three copies of Impermanence, as I mentioned. So essentially, I'm playing ten cop or ten hand traps in total. So, yeah, Impermanence is still really good. Easily one of the best uh, hand traps ever, especially because it plays around triple tactics talents. So, yeah. Uh, two Roar, you know, out of the two uh, Salamangri trap cards, this is probably going to be the one I want to see the most in my hand, especially going first. So, like, if I go first and see this, it, gives, it opens up my options to send Rage to the Graveyard with Gazelle's effects. So, yeah. Like, I definitely love to see both ha both traps if I can, but out of the two, I'd rather see the counter trap since it's harder to deal with. But Rage is just really good because, you know, it gets rid of everything, well, just about anything on your opponent's side of the field so long as you uh, control a Link monster that was summoned with itself. So, like, with two uh, with Sunlight Wolf, you get to pop two cards. Helio, three cards. So, yeah, Rage still an amazing card. Uh, definitely one of the best targets for your Gazelle to dump to the grave. So, yeah, I definitely recommend it. And last but not least, one copy of Imperial Order. Imperial Order is so good right now because um, the way a lot of people are kind of like playing around protecting their uh, lingering effects, again, Calamities or Zexel, um, people are actually starting to utilize Book of Moon a lot more now. So Imperial Order plays around that. And what's also funny is that Imperial Order actually plays around Forbidden Droplets. So like if your opponent doesn't discard a trap, you can essentially just slap this Imperial Order on them and you can basically stop droplet from actually resolving so yeah imperial order is really good it's also good against dark ruler no more since you know dark ruler no more states you can't activate monster effects in its response so yeah you'd be surprised how much uh power or just how much work imperial order really puts in so yeah so that's it for the main deck now we're moving on to the extra deck uh extra decks are not really that different i'm still playing three copies of Baylings. you know this is basically the standard ratio three Baylings, three sunlight wolf two heat leo 
And this one's pretty optional. You don't have to run this, but I'm running the one Almar simply because there are times if I don't open up with a salad monster, there are times where I like open up with an exceed and a, a hand trap or two. I'll just normal summon the hand trap. If it's an ash blossom, I can easily recur with sunlight wolf and then still go, manage to go full combos. Just all the hand traps literally have no attack points. So yeah, you can just go into Al Mirage and just kind of still go full, almost full combo there that way. So you'd be surprised. Um, moving on, of course, still got to run the one Splash Mage, the Update Jammer, Transco Talker, Axis Co Talker, which if you don't have access to this card, you know, I mean, Transco basically does almost the exact same thing. You can still OTK with Transco Talker. You can also run uh, Mech Knight Crusader Avermax. Avermax is still really good. So, you know, or you can even go, uh, well, actually, no, you wouldn't be able to go Borlo Dragon, because if I'm not missing, that one is actually a Dragon Monster. So, uh, you could actually go uh, Topologic Zero Boris. Zero Boris is still an amazing option. So, yeah, like, there's plenty of options you can go with. Again, you don't actually have to use X Code Talker if you don't have, if you don't, if you don't have to, you know, or if you don't want to, I should say. But anyway, uh, for Rank Force, still running Abyss Dweller, and of course, the one Baguska. I'm so happy I got my ultimate rare back. Uh, I managed to get another one, so yeah. All right, so that's it for the extra deck. Uh, side deck is pretty self-explanatory, honestly, because again, this format's a little different now. So uh, for the side deck, I'm running three copies of Nibiru. This is actually still pretty good right now, uh, especially against Zoo, since, you know, with Zoo, they usually uh, try to do uh, four materials into um, Dryden and then... And then from there, once they battle with the Dryden, they'll go into Zeus. So Nibiru is just really good on that. So they really like to try to push for four or or no less than four materials for their Dryden. So Nibiru is a good way to kind of punish them. Um, still good against certain rogue decks like um, Inferno Noble Knight, which is a little bit more fragile. Same thing with Dragon Link. But again, you might not see that them as quite as much right now. So yeah. Uh, against the Drytron matchup, you know, Droll and Lockbird, you know, this is amazing for that for that matchup since they do a lot of searching especially with that cyber angel benton i can't believe they found they managed to abuse the hell out of that card so yeah definitely get your drone lock birds if you don't have them already it's gonna be your best way to deal with that matchup artifact lancia i was running chaos or, or not chaos source or um, chaos hunter before but i decided to go with lancia simply because you know um this is mainly for eldritch but it's also good against dinosaur now, Dinosaur, you might not see quite as often, too, but you'll be surprised that if someone discovers a way to keep it relevant as it is, as, or as it always been, in my opinion. So, yeah, like, Dinosaur is still an amazing strategy. I would still play Dinosaurs in this format, too. But, yeah, Lancia is just a good way to kind of combat that. But, again, this is mainly for Illich, since, you know, their trap cards banish themselves during the end phase. You can just spray this on them, and they can't really resolve them. So, Or they can't even banish anything from their graveyard at all. So, yeah, Lancia is still... A good option i would definitely try this out uh, another good strategy against uh well another good card against the virtual world strategy goes to match all their monsters are different attributes and this card really sh uh, slows them down so it's going to be really hard for them to play around goes and match if they don't have an out to it uh for the one of one cos one more copy of cosmic cycle in case if i need it and harpy's feather duster which is really good you know just to clear up back row too so yeah definitely something to consider well, hopefully you guys enjoyed this, and as always, I will catch you guys again next time.